consecutive win game streak against the Broncos ends in Denver. They lose this one 34-18 to the Broncos. I'm Amber Theo Harris along with Eric Allen. And uh, Eric, this was a tough one considering this was a game that the Raiders came out ready to play yeah. and they were up 10 nothing uh, late in the second quarter and then it just seemed to fall apart with the interception early on. Yeah, we're going to talk about this a lot today, and it's uh, how you deal with adversity. Mm -hmm. And this team didn't do a very good job of that uh, today. It's very disappointing, actually, when you look at uh, everything going into this game, all the outside noise that has been going on with this organization, and then start off hot and get yeah. those 10 points, have two great drives, both offensively and defensively, playing at a very high level, so you're very confident about what was going to happen towards the end and the middle of the game. And, uh, just, and we're going to talk about it today. Couple plays here, or there, and just kind of just blew this game totally open, which is so unfortunate for. And that's going to happen, right? Yeah. In a game, you got to learn how to bounce back. You have and the Raiders to. did not show that ability that's right. today, and there's a lot of questions going forward. We're going to talk all about it. Um, of course, the quarterback situation, yep. and just I think this is going to be a gut check. A lot check. of questions. A lot right of now. A gut check. We're going to break yeah. it down, especially three big things. Max Crosby was back. And yep. You know, even not full go, look at what he was able to do. We're going to talk to him coming up in the show. And what a rough day for Gardner Minshew. A day that started out great in the first quarter, dominated the first quarter, but that man right there came up with a couple of picks uh, and what would lead to a quarterback change. And so, as we said, is it Aiden O'Connell? Is it Gardner Minshew? There are so many questions going forward, but let's look back. Hey. Max Crosby ready for battle. Always. We know he's not 100%. We know he didn't want to miss another game, and he is out there for his team early on. Uh -oh. Opening drive of the game. That is the first first down on an opening drive that the Raiders have had all season long. So it was out to a good start. Yes, and that's why he's in there to use his legs, build a play breaks down. You're able to get a first down with your legs. Look at JPJ. JPJ trying to get one, trying to get one. <laughs> 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 Give me a body. All that's right, next right. play, first and ten. He finds oh, Brock Bowers. Rock that was Bowers. beautiful. Oh, that was man. 57 yards to the house for a touchdown. He goes up and gets the contested ball. Take another yeah, look at this. Yeah, we've seen this route before where he's acting like he's going across the field. But just look at that. Just takes it right off the DB's head or linebacker's head and finishes. What an outstanding play for our guy, Brock Bowers. First career touchdown for him. So, you know, he got that ball. So the Raiders off to a 7-0 lead early. And here we go again. Gardner Minshew sacrificing for the first down 11 yards to the Vegas 22. Fired up, fired up. Two plays later, second and three. And he finds Jacoby Myers for 18 yards. And that was on who? Patrick Sertan. That's right. Don't forget that job. name, though. Yeah, don't, don't forget that are, name. Those are good design plays where you're running guys off, having your receiver come across the middle, and great timing by the offense. Later in the drive, we talked to Alexander Madison this week about catching passes out of the backfield. He does it there. 12 yards, first down Raiders. This drive ends in a 40-yard Daniel Carlson field goal. And just like that, oh yeah, first quarter, Feels we are good. up 10-0. Here come the Broncos. Miss tackle, miss tackle. That would be a theme. That would be. Marvin and Mims Jr. rushes for 17 yards, first down Broncos. Right, I want you to pay attention to a lot of these plays that are being made. Oh, we but got Max Crosby on the edge. <laughs> yes, <laughs> quiet down, healthy or not, Max Crosby getting great job by using that uh, pass rusher move, making sure you get back outside, but more importantly, Max Crosby getting it done. Loss of 13 yards on that play. Here comes Bo Nix to Javante Williams. 13 yards. Robert Spillane with the big hit to Puts get him down. out of bounds. But they are in field goal range. Yeah. And a lot of these plays are made. Watch how the Broncos are attacking the outside part of the football field to make sure Bo doesn't have to read the middle of the field and all that stuff. He's just outside the pocket. You have a receiver you can see and let him make those easy throws. So the Broncos are on the board. It's 10-3 Raiders. Next possession. Amir Abdullah with Amir White out today comes up huge, breaks free for 40 yards down to the Denver 29. Yeah. What a run. Yeah, what a run. Explosive run here. As you see, the cutback, get to the second level, make a guy miss, then use your speed to get out in front of guys. Outstanding run by the running back. Way to step up with a running back out. So here we go. Raiders knocking on the door, about to go up 17 to 3. It's going to be the Raiders' deck. Hey. Oh. Patrick Sertan the second comes up with an interception that would prove to deflate Monster. the entire team. Monster play. 
going month. forward. Yes, without a doubt. And, and the broadcasters on Fox kept talking. We weren't there. How you could literally feel the, the, the complete temperature of the room change. The, the entire stadium. Oh. You could feel it change there at Mile High. So and you could, you could feel it here, too. You could feel it here, too. <laughs> we were screaming for sure. So instead of being 17-3, it is now a tied game. But look at this punt here. Our look special teams. Punt. Isn't that beautiful? He, he's the best in the league. AJ Cole. Got him backed up. Down to the Denver three. Backing him up. Said, it's all right, guys. I got you. Watch this play. It's laterally. All right. Outstanding design of a play. You miss a tackle here. You're not in the right space. And from a young quarterback having to play from behind and back towards his end zone is now out in front. So again, one of those design plays where the ball gets out fast, a couple missed tackles, and you're in trouble. Missed tackles would be a theme for the Raiders defense. There's a good play. Christian Wilkins yeah. with his <laughs> first full sack. He's had half and he get it. And then you got to be careful there. You can't just jump right, on him. Right. I was a little nervous, but you know, see good the, to see him. He, oh, yeah. With an injured Max Crosby, with Max Crosby not 100%, we knew we needed something from him. Two plays later, though, Bo Nix took oh, incomplete. That's right. Jacorian. Squeeze that route. That's so good that this young guy is learning now. You just don't have to cover the, the deep route, but to be able to squeeze that outside route to come inside and make a play is really good for him. Broncos were forced to punt there, but they get the ball back with under 30 seconds left. And he hits Troy Flank Franklin, Look 19 yards. Look at the time. Look at the time. They get back to they the line. They get back in just enough time. But it's from 60 yards out. We say, okay, good. All we're right. gonna We're going to go to the half tide. But there's a flag mm. on the field, and it's a personal foul for leverage yeah. against Janarius Robinson. You can't launch off. You can't launch off of somebody. You can't. And for our football team, these little penalties and missed tackles are the reason why we put ourselves in these situations. Well, you make a 60-yard field goal now a 44-yard field goal, which is makeable. And yeah. instead of going to the half tide. Not a lot of damage done from the pick six. Right. We're able, it's okay, guys. We're going to come out of the second half. Now they got a lead. They got a lead coming into the second half. Get after it. Starting them. off, setting the tone, though. You see the difference? Setting when, the tone. You see the difference when the quarterback has to drop back in the pocket opposed to outside the pocket where he can see the receiver open. That was really the difference today a lot of times on these big plays that the Broncos were making or getting sacked. So the Broncos were forced to punt on that drive, but then when the Raiders get their first possession of the half, it starts out with Gardner Minshew being sacked, a loss of six yards. Make That's Nick Bonito. Yeah, make a decision. Either get up the pocket like you did the first couple drives or throw it away. Raiders are forced to punt, but A.J. Cole does what he does, a 60-yard yeah, punt. punt. At the Denver 12, it's fielded by Marvin Mims Jr. What good is a good wow. punt? If the other team takes it back 38 yards, it gives you field position. Their field position starts at the Lane 50. integrity. You have to find a way to all be uh, in separate lanes running down the field. So if you get blocked, the next guy on your left or right is able to kind of pick up your slack. Broncos again. What? Where's that ball? Outside quick. And missed look, tackles. Missed tackles. Little Jordan Not a Humphrey. good combination. No, 27 yards. That should have been a, a completion for a couple of yards. That's right. He said it's a 27-yard play. Look at hey, that. Hey, get the ball out of his hands fast. You have some blockers in front. More importantly, we didn't tackle well. So that's why they're able to get those yards after contact. So three plays later, third and four, Bo Nix Look at passes. That. Same type of play. We're going to get the ball out of his hands fast. We don't want you to pressure on our young quarterback. Throw the ball on the edge. If you can get a missed tackle or get some blockers out, that's the Broncos theme for today. So Jaleel McLaughlin, four yards for the touchdown, and the Broncos have a 20-10 lead. Make your mind Here's up. Here's the Raiders' next possession. Make your mind up. Starts off with a sack again by Jonathan Cooper. Jonah Ellis is a loss of three yards. Next play, backed up third and 11, Gardner Minshew. And he's intercepted again, this time by Rale Riley Moss. Second interception of the game for Gardner Minshew. That was a good pick right there, Amber. I mean, you, you're throwing the ball into a situation where you think you have a small window, but the taller corner extends, goes up, high points the ball, and that's the end of the day for our guy, Gardner Minshew. Yeah, so AOC comes in with a little over a minute left in the third quarter, and he's backed up at third and 16 here. Incomplete pass to Alexander Madison. They're forced to punt, and Gardner Minshew started off the first quarter on fire, and here he yeah. is by the third quarter being benched for Aiden O'Connell in the fourth quarter here. Where's Broncos with the ball. On the edge, where you can see, 
and it's, it's big for the Broncos to be have this young quarterback on the edge where you can see a receiver, either throw it or run it. That was a really good theme for this Broncos offense uh, as the game continued to go on. And so here he is, second and one. Bo Nix up the middle for the one-yard touchdown, and the Broncos take a 27-10 lead. This is a quarterback that had struggled in every game he had played. Struggle. Struggle. <laughs> and he has 20, well, 20 points, seven points were from the pick six. And then Aiden O'Connell, hey, he gets an interception too. So three turnovers yeah. for the Raiders. Uh, I don't think we need to show you much more right. after that. And so they go on to lose this one, 34 to 18. It started off so promising. It did. First rookie in franchise history, Bo Nix, is to win three straight games. Here are the final stats, final 115 stats. rushing yards. Normally we say, hey, that's great, they, they're over 100, yeah. but 80 some of those came before that pick six yeah. in the second quarter. Uh, third down, uh, both sides, I mean, seven, seven to 15. 15. And you're gonna uh, say, hey, you know, look at that, and you're like, hey, that's That's because that's that's, they were three for four good. before the pick six. <laughs> you know, the numbers the were very turnovers. skewed, but the turnovers are where you can see, yeah. really see the story of the game. Yeah. The Raiders coughed it up three times with three interceptions, and were not able to force a turnover at all. And I think if you look at the overall theme, if you look at this game from 30,000 feet, yeah. we can talk about all the little things. We can talk about the 11 penalties uh, that came yes. when, when it counted, uh, especially the penalty on the field goal to end the half. Uh, we can talk about uh, mm -hmm. giving up, uh, you know, not being able to convert on third down in the second yeah. half. But overall, it came down to this team came ready to play. They were playing phenomenal. They dominated the first quarter. Sure did. They had over 10 minutes of possession of the football out of 15 minutes in the first quarter. Yeah. We're out to a 10 nothing lead. One bad thing happened. Right. One interception. That happens. But they could not come back after that. And that's a little bit of a bigger concern is where really is the is. resilience? You have been in that position before where the wind is taken out of your team's sails. you got to figure out a way to get back, get your mojo back after yeah. Yeah, every one of those players on our football team had been in that situation at some point in their college or professional career where you get kind of punched, slapped in the face, and you have to respond. This football team at this moment, not good enough to be able to play outside of a game, not being able to take a punch in the face and then respond back. You saw the little penalties, uh, the, abil not the, uh, the ability to uh, not have – the, the fortitude to be able to say, okay, that did happen, but we still have a lot of game to play, and it just seemed like every opportunity that we had to really stop a run, to really get the ball back, we weren't able to do it. And that's unfortunate for this football team because coming off of last week's performance, you thought that, hey, we were going to be able to respond. There are certain situations that we have to be in and flourish, but if we're not in those positive situations, we have enough capital on offense and defense, enough players to be able to make it happen. I just thought after that turnover, nothing went right for a series or two. And then after that, just a floodgate opened up, Amber. And uh, when you look down at the stats, three for four on third down before that pick, and then afterwards, just terrible. Uh, Penalty-wise, not very good. Time possession, rushing, everything that went wrong today it was a situation where we had to clear, we have to clear it up and going into next week. And that happened so early in the game. That's my yes. big concern. You have yes. a lot of game to go. All right, we're going to ask a lot of these questions to Max Crosby. He's nice enough to join us, talk about what went wrong coming up next on Raiders Game Day. Every year, millions fly with us at Allegiant because together we go places. We see old friends and try new things. We laugh. We really like to laugh and reconnect. We remember and we wander, which leads to wonder. From how we go to where we go to what we do when we get there, we go further together. It's in our very nature to find exhilaration in the new, to seek the excitement of the unexpected, an endless yearning to experience what lies beyond the everyday. Hey, 
Hey, Raider Nation, when you come to see the Raiders take the field at Allegiant Stadium, you should do it from the best seats in the house. So grab an ice cold Coors Light, and you can enter to win tickets for these Coors Light silver seats at Allegiant Stadium with plush seating, state of the art beverage coolers, and wireless phone chargers. There's no better place to watch your Raiders bring home the win. Celebrate responsibly. Looking good, guys. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, hey, Pickle. Hi, Dad. I brought Mom's glasses from the hotel. Oh, great. She's in the ballroom, the big one. I'm coming up. Vacations are better with the credit gods on your side. Rewards once available to the few are now accessible to the many. Earn points for travel with Credit One Bank and live large. Dude, you're looking ice cold. You look ice cold, bro. Hey guys, somebody's coming. Somebody's coming. Let's do it. There comes a day, gonna be a day when I'll be the one you drink. Uh, it's gonna uh, It's gonna be me. Dude, are you crying? You've earned this. So hold it up high. Your five-star chefs on four wheels, running your kitchen all over town, pushing through working hours and after hours. No matter rain or shine, because when you stay hungry, your neighborhood stays fed. You are a fighter, and this is your reward. Medela, the mark of a fighter. Raiders game day is brought to you by Allegiant, the official airline of the Raiders. Low fares, non-stop flights, only at Allegiant.com. America First Credit Union, the official credit union of the Las Vegas Raiders. Modelo, a reward for those with a fighting spirit, the mark of a fighter. Drink responsibly, imported by Crown Imports, Chicago, Illinois. And by Cox, proud partner of the Las Vegas Raiders. And so the Raiders lose this one at mile high, 34-18 to the Denver Broncos to fall to two and three, a team they had beaten eight consecutive times before this game. Let's go out to Denver and bring in Max Crosby to talk about it. And Max, we do appreciate you spending some time with us. We know this is a tough loss. Um, but to this team's credit, after a week full of distractions, you guys came out ready to play. Uh, you get up 10 nothing, and it looked like everybody was in a rhythm. And then the Patrick Sertan interception happened and it just seemed like as a team nobody could recover after that how would you describe kind of that seismic shift that we all felt yeah I, I mean that's uh that's the NFL you know at the end of the day um it comes down to consistency um no matter what's going on in the game uh we got to show up and be at our best and uh we didn't do that for four quarters so a lot of things to learn from um, but we're not going to have long faces and be, you know, sit here and pout um, the solutions in this in this locker room and in this building. So get back to work tomorrow um, and, and keep finding ways to improve. You know, it's very early in the season. We know we got to improve and that's what we're going to do. So um, got a lot of room to grow. And we're going to do that. Max, you're one of the best players in the National Football League. Uh, you're a resilient player. Uh, and, and the rest of the team uh, seems to be lacking some of that resilience at times. Uh, what do you guys need to do uh, this week in practice to make sure everyone is ready to kind of with, withhold or withstand like a punch in the mouth? I mean, at the end of the day, um, it's on all of us. Starts with me, starts with the leaders. Uh, we got to be better. Um, so I'll take it on the chin. You know what I mean? It's, it is what it is. We, uh, we got to find ways to improve. Um, I got to find, you know, better ways to be a leader. Uh, we got to have more people step up. And resiliency, it starts, I'm, you know, right now. You know what I mean? Getting recovery, starting to get ready for the next week and getting in there early tomorrow. And you know what I mean? It's, it's a, the consistency. You can't be consistent just on Sundays. You got to do it every day, all year round. And, um, you know, we got to find ways to do that. So, like we said, we get back to the drawing board and uh, find a way to win next week um, against a good team in Pittsburgh. So, you know, it's a week to week game. Um, it's a tough loss, but um, we're going to find a way to get better. And I, I know I'm going to put everything into it. L last question for me. Um, 
a lot of young players stepped up uh, last week, and we saw a lot of people's numbers who hadn't been called be productive and contribute to this team, and we know that the talent is there. So as a leader, how conscious are you going into this week of how many of those young guys are going to be looking to somebody like you to unite the, the locker room, as you said, no long faces, and to kind of keep the tone going forward, set the tone? Yeah, I mean, they're on the 53-man roster for a reason. Everybody's here to contribute and uh, help us win. So if you're a rookie, if you're a 10-year guy, it doesn't matter. You know, if, if your name and number is called, um, you got to be ready to go. So uh, I believe in these guys. I believe in this team. And um, we keep showing up for my dues. And uh, we just got to find ways to play better complimentary football and keep improving um, on a daily basis. So we're looking forward to that. Last one for me, Max. Uh, I mean, we all know about the high ankle sprain. You look great out there today. Had some great explosions, some some money making plays again. How are you feeling physically right now? Um, <laughs> you know, um, I'm working back to uh, <laughs> trying to get back to 100%. Um, you know, it's hard. It is what it is, though. You know what I mean? I'm. I train all year round to be in these positions, and if I'm not 100%, uh, I believe my 60% can compete at the highest level. So um, I got, you know, I'm getting better and better. You know, it didn't get worse. I was able to go out there and play a lot of snaps and help us, you know, you know, help us make some plays. So um, I'm going to keep working, do what I do every day, um, and I'm keeping proving 1%. So I'll be fine. Yeah, but mentally one of the toughest players in the That's National right. Football League. We know you're going to lead the team out of this. Uh, Max, we look forward to seeing you guys rebound against the Steelers. Thanks for spending some time once again. Take care, my brother. Appreciate you guys. And when you look at what happened before and after the pick, and, and we hate to harp on one play, but this game really yeah. was defined uh, by one play. Usually you can look back, and there's a number of plays that lead to a loss, but it was everything good was happening before the pick six, and then nothing good happened after the pick six. And I think we have some numbers to show right. how much it, it turned the tide of the Momentum game. Momentum-wise. 31 what's your, yeah. unanswered points. 31 unanswered points. Um, you can look at what happened there. Right. And, and was he going for Brock Bowers or I, was I, it Jacoby Myers? No, I think it was a Jacoby Myers play outside because of the fake. But you see Brock is right there wide open. I'm not sure if Gartner from his angle was able to see Brock because of the defensive end had his hands up. So coming out of huddle, they probably thought, man, this play is designed to get Jacoby free and open. So that's kind of where I'm going with the ball. But after that, how do you respond? And we've talked and seen so many opportunities. You, you know, you went to a UFC or a boxing match yeah. weeks ago. I went to the Alvarez fight, and there was an yeah. undercard where the, the guy in the first two rounds, I thought there's no way he's going to make They're going to call the fighter. He's going to get knocked out by the second round. Right. He goes the distance and wins the fight. Exactly. Right? you got to be able to do that. And looking at these numbers, this is after the momentum shift we saw after the pick six, two turnovers. They only had 28 rushing yards, and they were running the ball so well in the yeah. first quarter. But look at that. That's what concerns me is the penalties, the yes. discipline, the not being able to get it together is 10 penalties, 74 yards, and then you, you go four for 11 on third down. After going three for four before that. Before that, <laughs> but 31 unanswered points against an offense that had been struggling Slugged coming into this mightily. game. The over-under or the points total on this game was 36. 36. Yeah. Everybody thought this was going to be a defensive battle because you had two teams that were playing good defense, defense yeah. at the time, and the Raiders' offense made that defense look, look like, like Swiss cheese early on. It really right? did. It really uh, did. Was able to move the ball at ease, get out 7 nothing, get another field goal, you know, 10 nothing. And then to have that momentum shift, and I think that's what's the bigger concern going forward. There, it is. I think this locker room and the leaders like Max uh, need to, to sit everybody down and really need to, everybody needs to get on the same page. That Absolutely. we can't fall apart. No. We no. can't fall apart. There's, there's no way that you can go into this football game. There's a couple things. Turnovers are key. Everyone understands and knows that you can't win if you lose the turnover battle. That's one. Stopping the run. That's something that's kind of plagued this football team. It's inconsistent. Sometimes we're running the ball effectively and stopping the run. And to like today, you know, First half, doing a pretty good job, and then it kind of breaks down. Penalties. What is the one thing we have really gave credit for this coaching staff about the last year and a half? Is about 
how we've responded for penalties. We've done an outstanding job of being one of the least penalized teams after decades of being the most penalized team, and you see those things pop up. So again, when you're focusing on those little details, which you think hey, are important, they're very important to be able to win when you don't have, let's be honest, when you don't have the quarterback that can get you out of those situations by, you know, his ability to change plays at the line of scrimmage or, you know, the accuracy or his ability to get out of the pocket and make plays consistently that defenses have to be uh, concerned about. All these things kind of popped up when you're not leading. The only type of football game that this football team is able to win when we're playing from ahead, when we're playing smart, and when those things break down, you would think that this football team, with the leadership we have, both coaching and players, were able to respond better. We weren't able to do that today, Amber, and that's very frustrating and disappointing. All right, there was one bright spot, and that is probably for the future. Brock Bowers, you're going to break down some of his plays coming up here on Raiders game day. In 300 feet, turn left. With Cox's fiber-powered internet, you can do brilliant things. Like upload your voice to Dad's GPS in no time flat. And I miss you, Daddy. Happy birthday. Get multi-gig download speeds powered by fiber. Upgrade your internet today with Cox, the nation's fastest internet provider. Limited availability in select areas. How are you feeling? I'm good. Every year, millions fly with us at Allegiant because together, we go places. We see old friends and try new things. We laugh. We really like to laugh and reconnect. We remember and we wander, which leads to wonder. From how we go to where we go to what we do when we get there, we go further together. Dude, you are looking ice cold. You look ice cold, bro. Guys, somebody's coming. Somebody's coming. Let's do it. There comes a day be a when day I'll be the one you drink. Uh, it's gonna uh, It's gonna be me. Dude, are you crying? It's in our very nature to find exhilaration in the new, to seek the excitement of the unexpected, an endless yearning to experience what lies beyond the everyday. Intermountain Health understands that life can be a challenging game, and mental wellness is vital to our overall health. It takes courage to admit when we're not okay, and even more to reach out. If you or someone you know is struggling or in crisis, call or text 988 or visit strongestplay.com for mental wellness resources. Welcome back to Raiders game day as the Raiders lose this one 34-18 to the Broncos. One of the bright spots was Brock Bowers. The young tight end got his first career touchdown with the Raiders. It started off 7-0 Raiders. It set the tone and, of course, things went a little south from there. But, EA, the good thing is 
there's a promising future for him in this offense. Let's break it down. Without a doubt, Amber, Brock Bowers, number 89. He's on our squad, Raider Nation. You've got to be excited about this young man, how we're going to continue to focus on him on offense, kind of get this offense going. We know Brock Bowers has been targeted a whole bunch the first five weeks of the season, but he hadn't had a touchdown. But before we get to the touchdown, I'll just show you how we're going to get him ball. Little sprint out pass here, right? Get a ball to him. Yards after the catch has been his thing. Going back to college, he can do it all from every position on the football field. But see, early, you got to get the ball in hands, allow him to get upfield. He's running through tackles. Just great job by the offense getting designed here. And last week, we gave him reverse, right? On a run. I'm going to give him the fake block. Again, another easy throw, easy catch, allow him to get in the open field. First down again. He's a first down marker. Outstanding job again by this offense, showing that they can get him the ball in any situation. Just allow him early on to kind of get going. And this is the one that I like. We've seen this before where you kind of have a half rollout, like he's going to run across the field, and he goes back. Watch this. Athleticism takes that ball right out the air, gets his first touchdown as a Las Vegas Raider. We're going to see much more of this, Amber. Great job by designing him personal plays early in the football game to be able to use his athleticism. He's a night matchup nightmare. You love to see this young man get in the end zone. It's his first one of the year, but I guarantee you, Amber, this won't be his last. Brock Bowers getting it done for our Raider Nation. And you know what thing you, you, don't, you don't say very often about tight ends? Man, it's hard to catch him once he gets off and running. I don't even know what his 40 was, but he's got wheels. Not only does he have size, athleticism, he can get those contested balls. Man, once he's gone, hey. he looks like a receiver taking off there. He had 12 targets, eight receptions against Denver. 97 yards, almost hits the, the century mark there and gets in the end zone. So uh, he like is it. the third tight end all time, all time to reach three. 300 receiving yards in his first five career That's games. That's incredible. It's incredible. And incredible. look, there is no doubt when the Raiders had a choice to make it number 13. Yeah. There was a lot of really good deep defenders. There was cor cornerbacks right. yeah. still up there. I know yeah. you like to see the corners go high. Yeah. But really, Tom Telesco took the best player. He did. And a lot of people were surprised oh, yeah. that Brock Bowers was still there. That's right. That's how good oh. he is. That's somebody that can be a foundation of your team for a long time going on. For forward. a long time. So I a mean, bright spot. And I like the fact that he's versatile. He can line up anywhere. Mm -hmm. He's going to get runs. He's going to line up wide like a receiver, like I'm in the slot, uh, you know, definitely line up with his hand in the ground as a U or the tight end. So the guy is able to kind of get it done and kind of get this offense going. You like the fact that the targets were over double digits and most of the time he's going to secure the catch. And that's what I yeah. love about him is the first couple uh, games. I mean, he was nine for nine at one point. So that tells you he's a secure ball catcher. He's able to have a great uh, uh, leaping ability, taking balls off the DB's head. So again, Brock Bowers getting it done in this offense. You love to see that. And hopefully that's going to open the offense up a little more and allow you to get those 100-yard rushing days and be able to take some shots downfield. There's no doubt the offense needs a center around him. He's a big, yeah. a big part of the game plan going forward. But the big question coming out of this game is who will be throwing him the ball going forward. We saw Gardner Minshew benched, right. somebody that won the job because of the type of offense that um, Antonio Pierce and Luke Getze wanted to run. They wanted a more mobile quarterback. Um, but it didn't work out for this game. Uh, we saw Aiden O'Connell come in. He struggled. Uh, granted, you know, in his very first series, he gets a 10-yard penalty uh, right away. He's backed up, and then Madison gets a, a run for no, no yards. He's in second and long. Um, we didn't get to see a very big sample size from right. him. Um, in your opinion, going forward, knowing that it's going to be expected to be a defensive battle going up against the Steelers, yeah. although Justin Fields has been playing, who would you start? Well, I think you have to get Aiden an opportunity. Uh, when Aiden has been in the game the last couple times, it's been pretty much a predictable game. You kind of understand and know what the offense has to do. I would like to see Aiden with the game plan surrounded about his strengths and uh, being able to get the ball out of his hands quickly, be able to take some shots downfield. And again, it's about the decision making, how you process uh, information coming from the, uh, the defensive side of the football. And I think uh, he's earned his opportunity to be the starting quarterback uh, for next week against a very, very good football team in the Steelers. You know they're going to come with some outstanding defense, and you would think that uh, you don't want him on the run outside the pocket. No. So you have to devise a scheme that fits his strengths. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be a lot of max protection. You can test some 12 personnel with two tight ends. That's something we've been building on uh, since the beginning of the season. 
the opportunity to have the strikes downfield. The ability to be able to throw from sideline to sideline is something that is a strength of his and hopefully will help us uh, going forward against this Steelers football team. You have to remember that when the Raiders went 5-4 and four at the end of last year, who was the quarterback? I think that was Aiden. Aiden O'Connell. Uh, <laughs> we'll see what decision Antonio Pierce makes, and you know that reporters are going to be asking Antonio Pierce about it, his post-game press conference, coming up next here on Raiders Game Day. It's in our very nature to find exhilaration in the new, to seek the excitement of the unexpected, an endless yearning to experience what lies beyond the everyday. You've earned this, so hold it up high. It's your job to stock the city, restaurants and rooftops, Bars and basements. Every corner, every corner store. And when it gets tough, you stay driven. Give it all you got, going nonstop with 20 stops. Because at the end of the day, every single round is on you. You are a fighter, and this is your reward. Modelo, the mark of a fighter. In 300 feet, turn left. With Cox's fiber-powered internet, you can do brilliant things. Things are approaching. Like upload your voice to Dad's GPS in no time flat. And I miss you, Daddy. Happy birthday. Get multi-gig download speeds powered by fiber. Upgrade your internet today with Cox, the nation's fastest internet provider. Limited availability in select areas. Every year, millions fly with us at Allegiant because together, we go places. We see old friends and try new things. We laugh. We really like to laugh and reconnect. We remember and we wander, which leads to wonder. From how we go to where we go to what we do when we get there, we go further together. This segment of Raiders Game Day is brought to you by Twitch. Be sure to check out the Raiders' fifth quarter podcast. Listen and follow wherever you podcast. Can you, I, I know you haven't seen the film, but can you put your finger on what happened? I mean, the team came out so well, and then after the pick six, it just seemed to struggle. Yeah, we just got to, you know, we got to fight the momentum. We knew there was going to be a player or two in the game that wouldn't go our way. Obviously, that happened, and then, you know, at the end of the game, at the end of the day, we came back in here at halftime. It's a 10 to 13 ball game. We got to keep playing, um, and we just didn't make enough plays. And obviously, penalties and turnovers killed us. What are you going to do at, at quarterback? Will, will AOC be starting next week? I don't know. I haven't did, answered did, that one yet. Did Wilkins hurt himself celebrating? Was that? Did Wilkins hurt himself celebrating? I don't know. I just know he was dealing with a foot injury. We'll see what happened. I didn't see where the injury or whatever occurred, no. AP, having been a defensive player at a high level, are you surprised at the missed tackles? Yeah, because it's something we work on at the beginning of practice each and every day. And then, you know, it just we, we got to get guys down. We got to, you know, you got to grab cloth. You can punch at the ball, do all these things that we train on turnovers. But then they, if you don't put a man on the ground, now you're allowing explosives. And a couple of those explosives came on missed tackles. Antonio, sorry if you've already adjusted this, but uh, football doesn't normally come down to one play, but. Pretty big momentum shift uh, on the uh, on the interception by Sertain. Did you kind of feel like that was one of those kicks to the stomach at all? Or in the well, you felt the momentum. I think we all did. But you know, you kept playing. You keep playing. We come in here at halftime. It's 10-13. You know, felt good about what we was going to do at halftime going forward. And at the end of the day, you know, between penalties and turnovers, we, we hurt ourselves today. Antonio, what, what do you attribute just the up and down quarterback play to this so far this season? I got to watch film. You mentioned the penalties. That was a good point for today. It's kind of surprising. I mean, like a yeah, a lot of pre-snap, post-snap, special teams. I mean, it is – we got hit all across the board. And, you know, obviously we'll look at it and got to correct it because, you know, we come on the road – two things we always talk about we cannot do on the road is turn the football over and penalties. And those two things we led by a large margin, and that's not good enough. Scheme-wise, did Denver do anything any different than what you had anticipated? Their defense or offense? Scheme-wise, on defense? Against you, against your offense. I'm okay. Yeah, you're Who are you asking about? 
Well, I just asking about their defensive front. Their defense, I'm sorry. No, yeah. no. I thought early in the game, I thought we did a pretty good job running the ball. We had some explosives there in the run game. I mean, we're moving the ball in the first quarter. It looks real good. And then as the game went on, it wasn't going our direction. What did you see on the Gardner uh, interception that was returned for the uh, – uh, It looked like it was a high throw just from my angle. And then, you know, we're looking at the iPads. I had to watch that one on film. But I did see a high sort of – obviously, the corner jump up. So, probably a high throw. What did you feel are the positives to take away from the game? I don't think there's any positives when you lose. What did you see from the defense as far as maybe gas out a little bit at the end, or did you see the towards the second half? Right, yeah, just, you got to keep playing. You got to get off the field on third down. Um, tackling. You know, if there's one thing I know we're, we're probably disappointed on when, you know, live and probably going to watch on film is the tackling. Got to do a better job getting them on the ground. Good. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Time now for one Ooh. big number, and oh. that one hurts. The Raiders' turnover differential this season is minus seven. That is at the bottom of the league, one of the worst teams in the NFL. And look, Antonio Pierce just said it. You know, you can't turn the ball over on the road. You can't turn the ball over ever. When, when you lose the turnover differential in a game, you lose most of the time. Yes, Most of the time. It the is probably the most clear. It's overwhelming. Yeah. It's, it's in yeah. the 90s percentage-wise right. of the times you're going to lose. And right now, of course, the Raiders are they're, uh, they're 0-3 when losing the turnover battle. But yeah, there's, a, there's a bigger concern, not just – I feel like so many people are focusing right now on the three interceptions that were thrown by the Raiders quarterbacks. The Raiders' defense needs to take the ball away. Yeah. This was touted as being – could have been one of the strongest defenses in the NFL right, coming in. Right, Everybody right. was very excited about what this could be. Yeah. They do not take the ball away. And you were a ball hawk. Oh, man. You will have a this gold jacket greatest, one day. This is the greatest <laughs> feeling for a DB. We, we don't need to see that. To we, take it away. We need to see that from the Raiders that one DB. Too, I mean, just like these are That's as a what DB. You do oh, when man, you're one you of the best great. in the league. When you feel like you're taking the ball away from, and all these plays, you can remember, man, as a defensive back, you know, okay, he's trying to throw a slant. Oh, man, this is right in my wheelhouse. Let me knock it up to myself and pick it off. Mm -hmm. You just understand it and you know how important taking the ball away and then if you're able to score or keep the team away from scoring or end the game with the, with the interception, it really deflates your opponent and gives you so much momentum as a uh, football team, as a defense, as a play caller. If you're a coordinator and you understand, wow, they're throwing at my best guy and he's just kind of cleaning their clock. This is kind of his day. And as a DB, if you're a certain or any kind of player on defense, that's what you want to do. And that's what I thought our defense was going to be about this Jack year. Jack Jones, is, uh, yeah. Robert Spillane, right. uh, Trayvon Merrick. Trayvon there are Merrick. plenty of guys plenty that of are guys. very capable and do have those ball instincts to go to the ball. Yes. But they do come in bunches. I get it. They're contagious. Right. But they need to jumpstart that somehow because you're that not going to win games if point. you don't take balls away from and the Especially offense. if you know offensively you have to play a certain way. So you're trying to take possessions away from your opponent, give them in favor position for your offense to help your offense score, get into the red zone or score yourself. Those are things that last year we took so much pride in, and it happened almost every other game. You know, we were taking balls to the house, celebrating. Yeah. Gives you a great opportunity to really feel that presence of your defense winning football. What's games. my favorite stat? Time of possession. Time of possession. Yes. How do you maintain time of possession? Your defense gives you the ball back. That's right. right? That's right. And being ball hawks does that, and that's something the Raiders need to improve on for sure. All right, when we come back, Another rookie quarterback gets the best of the Raiders. This is a trend that needs to change. We're going to take a look at the day that Bo Nix had coming up next. This segment of Raiders Game Day is brought to you by America First Credit Union. For every Raiders first down at Allegiant Stadium this year, America First Credit Union will be donating $100 to a local charity. is not an option. Taste is everything. 1800, the world's most awarded tequila. Looking good, guys. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, hey, Pickle. Hi, Dad. I brought Mom's glasses from the hotel. Oh, great. She's in the ballroom, the big one. I'm coming up. 
Vacations are better with the credit gods on your side. Rewards once available to the few are now accessible to the many. Earn points for travel with Credit One Bank and live large. Dude, you're looking ice cold. You look ice cold, bro. Hey guys, somebody's coming. Somebody's coming. Let's do it. There comes a day, gonna be a day when I'll be the one you drink. Oh, it's gonna It's gonna be me. Dude, are you crying? When you come to see the Raiders take the field at Allegiant Stadium, you should do it from the best seats in the house. So grab an ice cold Coors Light and you can enter to win tickets for these Coors Light silver seats at Allegiant Stadium with plush seating, state-of-the-art beverage coolers, and wireless phone chargers. There's no better place to watch your Raiders bring home the win. Silver seats! Silver seats! Celebrate responsibly. Every year, millions fly with us at Allegiant because together, we go places. We see old friends and try new things. We laugh. We really like to laugh and reconnect. We remember and we wander, which leads to wonder. From how we go to where we go to what we do when we get there, we go further together. eight-game win streak, consecutive wins against the Broncos. That now ends with the 34-18 to loss. And if you would have told me in the first quarter this was the way the game was going to oh, end, 34-18, I would have told you you were crazy. 34 points, well, minus seven because of the defensive touchdown. Yeah. Uh, Bo Nix and that offense was able to score against the Raiders' defense. This was an offense that had done nothing right. all year. A rookie quarterback that was learning, um, but the Broncos had won two games because of defense, the defense. running game, everything else outside of the quarterback. They scored and, uh, 10 points against the Jets last week, right? Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. And so – that is what is concerning is that this defense allowed Bo Nix to really get into a groove. And you do have to credit Bo Nix. Yeah. Um, this was the best game that he has played so far. He, he kind of heated right there, touchdowns. too. He's like, let me cook. Let me cook. That was after, that was right after a Troy Franklin drop. Yes. That would have, in the third quarter, he was open. wide open. Wide open. Busted coverage. Yeah. So we yeah. still don't know what he was yelling at Sean Payton about. But, I mean, look at that. He didn't look like a rookie there. Right. And and this is a bigger trend um, that, that has this us a little bit right concerned. Here. This was ugly right here. Look. This was a man that had a 62.5 quarterback rating coming into this game. The Raiders made him look like Peyton Manning in the Broncos uh, uniform. Yes. 117.2. Discouraging. He'd thrown one touchdown and four interceptions before this game. Two touchdowns, zero interceptions. 70% of his passes were completed. That's 10% more than what he was averaging. Yeah. You can't have a rookie quarterback if you want to be a good team that's going to win games. You've got to take the inexperience of a rookie and take advantage of that. And that, unfortunately, has been a problem for the Raiders. This is this is a, a rough stat. Okay. This is the seventh consecutive loss to a rookie quarterback for the Raiders since 2020. They have lost to... Seven. Seven. They've lost to Tyson Bajan, Kenny Pickett, Justin Fields, Tua, Bo Nix now, Brock Purdy, uh, Justin Herbert, all of them 100-plus oh. passer rating, 10 touchdowns and two interceptions in that, right that seven-game stretch. With those stats and, and those numbers that are factual, 
Raider Nation right now is, is having a heartache. You're talking about a young quarterback. You're supposed to be able to dominate young quarterbacks as far as defensive backfield. You're moving up and up and back, inside, outside. You're showing him different kind of leverages so he doesn't know what he's doing. You're trying to make sure that this young quarterback, no matter who it is, is really frustrated at the line of scrimmage. But these guys have really been able to kind of pick apart. It doesn't matter what defense, what coordinator, what team. We're talking about seven guys in a row. And, uh, he showed resilience too. Yeah, he, he showed did. resilience. He, you know, that first quarter he could get nothing going. He was barely on the field. The Raiders dominated uh, the time of possession, even into the second quarter. Uh, Bo Nix looked like the Bo Nix that we had seen in yeah, the first four games. Yeah. And then to his credit, right. you know, you don't want to discredit him for what he did. Uh, to his credit, he showed resilience. He didn't give up. He kept Who can fighting. adapt? How, how do you adapt to adversity? And you saw when he was in the pocket and we were able to pressure him, mm -hmm. he had some struggles. Mm -hmm. But I, I think when you look at it, the coaching staff from um, the Broncos did a really good job, Amber, of utilizing his mobility, getting outside the pocket. So now I can see the coverage. I can see if my receiver's open. If my receiver's not open, I'm going to run with it. But more than uh, enough times, there was one receiver there. So the offense did a really good job of getting this young quarterback in situations where he didn't have to read the middle of the football field. Just get him away from pressure, let him let him uh, do his thing, and that was very successful today. Look back at dynasties like Bill Belichick and the Patriots. They never let rookie quarterbacks. You're right about them. that. That's something you got to take care of. All right, when we come back on Raiders game day, Gardner Minshew is going uh, to hear. We're going to hear from him okay. from the scrum in the locker room. What's he have to say about the loss? That's coming up next. This segment of Raiders Game Day is brought to you by Coca-Cola Zero Sugar, the official soft drink of the Las Vegas Raiders. In 300 feet, turn left. With Cox's fiber-powered internet, you can do brilliant things. Like upload your voice to dad's GPS in no time flat. And I miss you, daddy. Happy birthday. Get multi-gig download speeds powered by fiber. Upgrade your internet today with Cox, the nation's fastest internet provider. Limited availability in select areas. You're doing it. You got this. Yes, this is great. Looking good, guys. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, hey, Pickle. Hi, Dad. I brought Mom's glasses from the hotel. Oh, great. She's in the ballroom, the big one. I'm coming up. Vacations are better with the credit gods on your side. Rewards once available to the few are now accessible to the many. Earn points for travel with Credit One Bank and live large. is not an option. Taste is everything. 1800, the world's most awarded tequila. Raiders game day is brought to you by Allegiant, the official airline of the Raiders. Low fares, non-stop flights, only at Allegiant.com. Credit One Bank, the official credit card of the Las Vegas Raiders. Coors Light, Choose Chill, an official beer of Raider Nation. Celebrate responsibly. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. And by Twitch, watch, discover, join in. Can you put your finger on something in particular that you thought that happened today? Did you see it coming in practice, anything in particular? No, nah, man, I thought we got off to a good start. I, uh, and then I killed our momentum with a pick six, you know? And at the end of the day, I didn't do a good enough job giving us a shot to be competitive in the game, you know? So at the end of the day, that's on me. We'll show back up tomorrow, get back to work like we always do, and uh, keep rolling. Uh, when Antonio makes the switch to O'Connell at the end of the third quarter, what's, what's your thoughts, what's going through your head there? Uh, you know, is what it is. 
try to help the team whatever I can, try to still be in Aiden's ear, tell them things I've been seeing, uh, and keep providing positive presence on the sideline. Uh, at the end of the day, no matter what my role is on the team, I'm try to help the team any way I can. And uh, you know, as far as getting back in the building tomorrow and getting back to work. When you mentioned hitting the wall, do you think it was what the Raiders did, or was it Denver? Um, I think it's a combination of both. You know what I mean? It's it's the NFL, so it's not like we're going to play perfect and they're going to play horrible. There's there's a combination on, on all three phases um, and across the board. And so I think um, we'll just again, like I said, I've, I'm I'm happy that we have the room and uh, the unit we have, the, the team we have that want to hold each other accountable and, and grow. This is going to be an interesting question for Antonio Pierce going forward because there's 12 games left, right? Yeah. Or did I do the math right? I was told there'd be no math. Um, <laughs> but you've got a long, a lot of season left. Yeah. And uh, you got to decide if you think that Gardner Minshew can come back in and rebound and win you a couple of games. If not, you better have faith that Aiden O'Connell can take you the rest of the way. Because once that switch happens, you don't necessarily go back to Minshew. It's I not understand. typical. So I think that's a difficult decision. You've got to look at it. Who do you have faith in that can get you some wins uh, going forward? And do you absolutely think you have to go to Aiden O'Connell and he's the guy? Yeah, I, I think you have to give Aiden an opportunity. With a week of preparation, understanding that you're the guy, you know his strength, you know what he did last season. I don't think there will be an issue in the locker room. I think guys will uh, be ready to back Aiden. Uh, he's won some big games for us. Uh, there was a certain skill set that he has to have mm -hmm. in order to we're playing a Steelers football team that is a lot like the Raiders. They're going to start with defense and finish with defense. So you have to have a plan with Aiden early on so he's not feeling that pressure from Watt. Uh, so, uh, like you said, they got to go forward. Yeah, got to go forward, and they got to go forward against the Steelers back yep. home. That'll be good to be back home. But the Steelers are three and one, and they have a mobile quarterback, and and that concerns me. We see Bo Nix go to the outside, as you said, can make passes. Amber, Amber, just a, this is Listen. a tough stretch. I know, Amber. I know what you're gonna say. No, just think of how we looked at this last week, opposed to this week. One week different. can make a total difference in how you look at each one of those teams. I mean, I tell right? you, L.A. is playing hard. Uh, the, Bengals, oh. the Bengals went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Ravens, scored four, almost 40 points. Uh, that's a tough stretch. You Raider know Nation, here we Raider go. Raider Nation, you got to get it back uh, on track. Coming up, but the Raiders lose this one, 34-18. They are now 2-3 and three on the year. They come back home, Raider Nation. They're going to need you out there for Eric Allen. I'm Amber Theo Harris. We'll see you next week.